Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Charting Toward Intimacy covers mature topics. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the conversation around Catholic sexuality. We're your hosts, Ellen and Kathleen. Welcome back to Charting Toward Intimacy. My name is Ellen. I'm Kathleen. And we are here with another episode. Um, We are talking today about rules. (laughs) Yes. And... And how the rules are not arbitrary. Um, the the rules around, I mean, any rules around our faith are not arbitrary. Um, but particularly when it comes to sex, sexual intimacy, those rules, procreation, you know, procreation rules, right? They're not arbitrary um, and they serve a really important purpose. Yeah. And I think that... Um... Why do we want to talk about this today? Um, I think we want to talk about it because um, we've been seeing uh, that a lot of people in social media and kind of out there, or some people, maybe not a lot, but some people, um, have sort of been talking about the unhelpful things that they've learned or that they've um, sort of intuited from religion. And how we're like internalized, internalized. Yes, exactly. From religion and how religion has sort of oppressed them in regards to sexuality. Um, and that's not a good thing, right? Like oppression is never a good thing, Mm -hmm. but, um, it's very clear that those people are not really understanding. They're seeing the rules. And I, I put quotations around that, right? Like the rules as, as arbitrary oppressive, probably old fashioned, um, and things that really just hinder them becoming the full person, um, that they, that they feel they should be when in reality, there's a totally different perspective we need to take around, around Mm -hmm. rules. Um, and that's kind of what we want to dive into. Um, there's a reason it's not just a free for all. There's a really good reason it's not just a free for all. Um, so we're going to, yeah, we're going to dig in and talk about that to kind of clarify that point and why the church should not be viewed as oppressive, especially in regards to our sexuality. Yeah. Cause I think what happens a lot of times with the rules is they are stopping us from something we want to do. Right. So yeah, let's just give the, the obvious example of like contraception and the, the rule against contraception. It feels like it is stopping us from getting to have sex whenever we want it. And well, yes, (laughs) that might be true in a way. It's actually not at all. Right. Cause there's, like God does never say like you can't have sex within a married relationship. Right, like that's true. that's true. You're actually the one that's imposing that on yourself by saying, exactly. okay, we, you know, we, we don't want to get pregnant right now. We can't get pregnant. Right. Like, so we need to not have sex. Um, but like th- imagine standing in front of a closed door. I think this is what we see a lot of times when we see these rules is we're looking at this closed door saying what I want is behind that door and God has shut it. And Mm -hmm. all of that whole statement is true. (laughs) Yeah. Something that you want is behind that door and God shut that door, but you're looking in the wrong direction. What God actually wants you to do is turn around to this big, huge open double door into Mm -hmm. his glory That he's like, I have something so much better for you than what's behind that closed door. And so I'm going to shut this door because I don't want you to have that because it's not good for you. Because there is something so much better for you on the other side. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And so, yeah, I mean, that's that's the rules. That's why that's that's why they exist is because they are guiding us toward god like not not toward these these things 
that we want, or I mean, in, in all honesty, we think we want those things. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we, but, but truly in our human nature, we, we don't. Right. And I think that, um, in something like NFP in practicing NFP, this gets particularly tricky because like you said, like we impose the rules on ourselves in a way, like Mm -hmm. there is never a time that God tells you, you cannot have sex within your married relationship, right? Like he might call you to a period of, of maybe abstinence, right? Like, but even if you were to engage in sex, it is still very much a licit thing. Right. right. Like there's never within a, a time, married relationship. Like, well, I, right. As long as both spouses are entering into it together and right. openly and honestly, freely, and love, totally, faithfully, ne- fruitfully. Freely, right. Totally. <laughs> exactly. Like it is never an illicit thing. It is never a bad thing. Right. So because of that, we, we look at NFP as this, as yeah, these set of rules being placed on us. Um, when really we, we kind of place them on ourselves, not, and not that that's a bad thing to do. Like God has given NFP to us as a gift, right? That if we are wanting to space children, if we are wanting to abstain, it is a valid and licit way to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it becomes really tricky when you do want to space your children, but you do also want to be intimate with your spouse because you're in a good, solid, licit relationship, right? That it's like, well, why can't I have both? Like, why can't I have the pleasure without having the children right now? Like, we've been open forever, right? Like, we have, I mean, I'll use myself as an example, right? We've been married for 10 years and we have five children. We have been open to life, right? (laughs) Like, every other year, more or less, we've had a child. So we've been open to life. So why can't I have the break but also the pleasure and the unity with my husband. Like, why can't I, right? And it becomes it becomes really tricky to kind of see that and, and keep in mind exactly what Ellen's saying, that we're looking at the closed door, but we're not looking at the wide open double door into glory behind us. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so we, we do. We focus on the rules. We focus on... Um, what we can't have, what we feel like we're not allowed to have, right? Um, but there is a reason and, and, and a good. And, you know, we have to look at the Old Testament for this. Mm-hmm. There's literally an entire book in the Old Testament about laws. <laughs> It is called Leviticus, right? Like well, and the like the entire book, and more than just Leviticus is full of laws too, right? Like, like Leviticus is only laws, but then like a bunch of the other books, like Deuteronomy's got plenty yeah. of laws, um, but oh, like yeah, a lot 100%. of them, um, Exodus has a bunch of law. Like they're all they're all kind of weaved in there. Those are a little bit more story like chronological books right. whereas Leviticus is literally just like here's how you do this here's how you sacrifice this right and it's very specific so very specific. painfully specific if you have not read <laughs> Leviticus I don't recommend if you haven't read the Bible I don't recommend starting with Leviticus it's yeah it's, like, don't painful. start with we won't Leviticus. make it through the rest of the Bible yeah um, <laughs> yeah you just you won't but you can still get um, stuff out is, of it Oh yeah, 100%. But it is painfully specific. Um, but you know, it's it's literally a whole book of laws. And I think that when we look at the, we talk about God sometimes as like the Old Testament God and the New Testament God. He's right? the same Where God. Like, <laughs> he's the same God, right? But like, if we look at the Old Testament God, he just looks like a God of rules and vengeance and, you know, like, which is not, he's, he's a God of justice. Mm-hmm. Right. Whereas we look at the New Testament God, and he's a God of mercy and of love. Right. So like they seem like very oppositional, but they create a whole picture of our God when they're put together. Right. Um, but anyway, so Old Testament God was very rule heavy, but he had to be rule heavy because he knows the nature of his people's hearts. He knows they are sheep who have the tendency to stray. Right. And he is calling Mm -hmm. them. They are the people. The Israelites are his people that he is calling to himself, 
right? Like there's a plenty of other people out there that aren't Israelites and he's not concerned with them as he is with the Israelites. They are his people. And because mm-hmm. there are all of these other extra people out there who are ready to influence the Israelites, he has to say, he has to set a very clear path. I am calling you to myself. If you are to make it to me, this is the path you need to stay on. These are the things that you need to do, not for arbitrary reasons, but because if you don't, you will be influenced by the outside. Well, and the rules are, they are here for protection. They are protecting us from the things that we don't actually want. (laughs) Um, Or, or, you know, and, and God is the one who sees all of this, you know, there's so much of it that we don't understand right now. Um, but I have a really good image, um, that like helps with this. Um, and if you're, if you're in our, um, our exclusive community, you can actually see this image, but I'll explain it to you. Um, we found a super cool feature on, (laughs) on our recording platform where I can share images for the video. Um, So anyway, if you want to actually see this image, come join the Charting Toward Intimacy uh, exclusive community. It's only $5 a month. Uh, Link is in the show notes. But um, imagine a plateau, a really, really tall plateau um, and like a group of kids playing on this plateau um and this plateau tall though that it's above the clouds yeah above the clouds like so tall if you if you fell off of the edge of this plateau you would literally die instantly (laughs) well no you're not instantly but when you fell um if there was a group of kids that was told to like play at the top of this plateau as it is they would be so scared and just huddling in the center of this plateau because falling off means sure death. But if there was a fence around the edges of this plateau, um, you can, if you're in the community, you can track where my <laughs> cursor is, <laughs> That's right. but, it, but imagine a fence around this really, really tall plateau. Now the kids can play freely within. They can fully become themselves and have yeah. fun and, and experience joy and contentment and happiness because safety they're not going to fall and off food. and safety, right? They're not going to fall yeah. off because mm-hmm. there is this, this wonderful protective fence. That is what all the rules are. Yeah. It is this wonderful protective fence that is stopping us from sure damnation. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's what I was going to say, actually. Like, you know, you said if they were told to play at the top of the plateau, they would kind of like huddle in the middle out of fear. However, there's another option, too, where they would run freely and fall off and die. Right, right. right? Like, Absolutely. there's really, if it's the impulsive kid, <laughs> they'll just go wild. We all have that kid. You know I've which one of kid. your kids would be I the 100- one running around and fall off percent have that kid i know exactly which (laughs) child that would be okay he would die very early on on top of that plateau without offense um but yeah those are the two options right we huddle in the middle out of fear to the point that we're not even really living our life Mm -hmm. right or at least the life that god wants us to live we're i mean it's almost like scrupulosity to it you know right like we're just so scared that we just play everything safe and we we huddle up in the middle or We just say, well, I'm going to do what I want anyway. I'm Mm going to go around. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to play. I'm going to do all the things. And then we're going to fall off because there's no, there's no protection. Yeah. There's no safety. And I think what we see in our, like our society right now is we see a lot of people just running around and falling off, like, and just, just running with insanity. Um, 100%. And so, you know, I think if we just recognize that like the, these rules of our faith, they're there to help us become more fully human and more fully Mm -hmm. ourselves. Um, These rules are signposts. They're pointing us toward God. And so that closed door 
is is actually telling you, hey, you're you're looking in the wrong direction. You need yeah. to point yeah. the other way. Um, you know, something, and this is a quote, I freaking love this quote. Um <laughs> from friends um and joey it's it's just like it's the most um if you're a friends fan fan um you know that the joey character is like kind of just dumb um (laughs) but it's the smartest thing he says in the entire series is there's one point where i think and i think he's talking to ross and ross like crosses the line he he like is dating somebody that Joey was dating or I don't know that I can't quite remember the situation, but Joey says, no, you haven't crossed the line. You are so far away from the line that the line is a dot for you. Right. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that quote. Yeah. But yeah. So I think a lot of our society has, has crossed the line and the line is a dot for them. But yeah. also the line should be a dot for us in a totally different way. We should be going so far away from the line toward God that the line yeah. becomes a dot for us. Yeah. Because what we're doing is we're hanging out by the line. We're hanging out by the rule. And we're saying, okay, all I have to do is not cross the line. All I have to do is not open this closed door. But we're so close to it that we're focusing on it. We're staring at the closed door going, well, but the door's unlocked. I could just open it real fast and then, and then I'll just shut it. Right. Oh, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if we just broke the, broke the rules just a tiny bit when it comes to, you know, we really want to be intimate right now, but don't want to have a kid. It's fine if we pull out. It's fine. Yeah. Right. This one time we're mostly open to life, right? No, you've opened the door right? You've crossed the line at that point. What we need to be doing is walk, walk far, far away from that line. And Jesus is going to lead us there, right? Like this is not something we have to do on our own. And I'm not saying that this is an easy thing either, right? But we are so focused on that closed door that we can't even see the fact that there is something so much better and so much greater for us if we would just turn away from the door and start walking toward Christ. (laughs) Yeah. And you know, you know what that reminds me of? And I'll, I'll end on this, but, um, it's the following the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. Ooh, yes. Jesus talks about this. He talks about this in the Bible. Like we, when we are close to the line, but still on the right side, but very close, we are following the letter of the law, mm-hmm. right? Like we are looking at the laws and we're saying, I don't understand it, but you know, we're, and we're toying with it. Like, okay, all I have to do is this, right? Like this could still count, right? Like we're questioning everything very closely versus when the line is a dot in the distance because we're moving towards Christ. We're following the spirit of the law, mm-hmm. right? We are, we are embracing the fact that we don't know as well as God does. We embrace it and we abandon to him in full trust and we go his direction regardless of what we want or how we feel. And we trust. Um, and that's when we really follow the spirit of the law. Right. Right. Um, because we don't know. Yeah. We don't know exactly why some of these rules are in place. And some of them can feel kind of confusing. Right. Like, you know, why? Why is it that the man has to finish inside the woman? It, it, doesn't that just that, that, uh, is that really that big of a deal? Right. You know, I mean, and I could argue that. but. <laughs> But let's just use the same example. It's just an example. Um, You know, there's, there's so many things that it's like, what, why, why is that the rule that just see, that's just seems a little arbitrary. Right. And, you know, God willing, we might be able to understand when, when we are, you know, in the full beatific vision and, and things will actually come into place. We'll be like, Oh, right. But right now we don't. And we don't need to, we need faith. We need to look at that closed door and say, okay, Lord, you shut this door. You told me that this is not good for me. I don't get it. I really think that what's behind that closed door would actually be really good for me. But 
I'm going to trust you. And I am going to take the tiniest little baby step toward you. Cause that's all you can do is just the tiniest little, yes, the tiniest little baby step. Like we, we do not, we right. do not have the power to do any of this on our own, but we can give the mm-hmm. smallest little yes. And God will, will accept that yes and return it to us, you know, a hundredfold. Right. And yeah. The more we walk away from that line, the more we walk away from that closed door and toward God, the the more fulfillment we are going to have, the more happiness we're going to have. That doesn't mean that we're going to have less struggle. Like, honestly, the struggle is probably going to get worse. (laughs) Yeah, no, that's true. (laughs) Like, you know, the cross got heavier the closer he got to Calgary, right? (laughs) Yeah, no, exactly. And I think that what happens to us when we are in these places is we have that question or that slight sense of doubt, right, as to like the purpose or the goodness of of a, a particular rule or law, right? And the devil uses that. Mm. It is like, it's like all you need is faith the size of a mustard seed to move mountains. All you need is doubt the size of a mustard seed for the devil to come in. Mm -hmm. right it's like that's it the smallest little bit and he will infiltrate he can infiltrate which is why i think it's so important that in times like these we really embrace the sacraments Mm -hmm. um i mean particularly the eucharist right and confession Confession, if necessary yeah. yeah i mean like really and and go into confession and bring this doubt to your priest right right say i'm struggling with understanding this and therefore, I'm struggling to practice it. And if I am practicing it, I'm practicing it with a bad attitude and a bad mm-hmm. spirit, right? Um, bring that to confession because that puts up the the gates that block Satan from being able to enter, right? Like the grace and the mercy of the sacraments puts up a gate to keep Satan out, right? right. But if you don't do that, if you don't shore up with the sacraments, with the grace, then he will use that tiny little bit and start asking you questions like, does it even matter? What's the whole, what's the point of all of this? It's really just nonsense. Why, why would that, why does it make sense that that should be true? Right? Like Mm -hmm. that's when the questions start happening and that's when you start circling. You're just like, wait a minute, what, what do I even believe now? You know, you Um, know what that reminds me of is, um, the screw tape letters. Have you read that book? Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's so good. If you have not read the screw tape letters, read it today. It's honestly not long. It's no, very... it's really not. I'll put a link in the show notes. Yeah, um you but should. oh my gosh. It's C. S. Lewis and a lot of public libraries have C. S. Lewis. So you might even mm-hmm. just like look at your public library for um screw tape letters. It is so good. <laughs> So good. And it really helps you to see how the devil works in modern day. He is not obvious in no. any way, shape, or form. Mm-mm. He's not just going around telling you to like do the big things like kill, you know, this person or like, you know, go rob this bank. Like he's not that's not how he works. Mm-hmm. He works by starting off really, really small in things that are seemingly insignificant and yeah. don't matter. And the screw tape letters really shows you that i mean very clearly to the point that you can think back in your own life and be like wow i remember when this happened and it was nothing it wasn't a big deal but then this followed after it and it's it changed my thinking to start going down this path right Mm -hmm. like you can see and you're also able to see the moments in your life where he might be able to enter yeah right right you can see the things that as in they're your happening. Life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As they're happening where it's like, oh my gosh, this is a perfect little tiny opportunity for Satan to infiltrate my thinking. Um, you know what else is, is really good is um, Emily Wilson, um, who if you haven't heard of her, she's um, she's a Catholic speaker um, and musician. Um, but on Instagram, on and off, she's done these like modern screw tape letters Um, for like women and for moms. Um, and they're fantastic. Like she's a really similar idea, but like even, even more modern, like she calls the phone, um, the little box, 
Um, yeah. and it's, it's, it's really, really cool. It's just more um, applicable to, to like yeah. us in our current state. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I encourage yeah. you to read screw tape letters before you go look at Emily Wilson's stuff, because yeah. like, it won't make sense. You'll be like, what the heck is this? Um, right. unless you've read screw tape letters and kind of understand like the, the, the cadence style. of yeah, the style exactly. of the screw tape letters. Um, the idea of the book is like a, so everybody has their like individual kind of like devil assigned to them. Demon, um, yeah. demon. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Wrong word. Um, and it's these letters from screw tape who is like the uncle of a brand new demon. Um, and like screw tape is giving the demon like, um, suggestions on how to get his assignment. Um, yeah. what does he call it? Patient? No. What are they called? I can't even remember. I forget. It's been um, so long since I've read it, but I'm I know sure I, I need to read it again. Uh, yeah. but anyway, like screw tape is like giving advice to this like younger demon who's on his first assignment with this like human, um, and trying to, you know, trying to turn this human toward eternal damnation. Um, and it's just, oh gosh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Truly. Um, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> if you're curious about how the devil can get into your life, go read the screw tape letters. Yeah, um, that was kind of a big, uh, circle around here, but, um, really <laughs> trust the laws, friends. That's <laughs> the moral of the story. Trust Jesus, <laughs> trust the boundaries that he has set for us. Even if we don't understand them, bring them to confession, right? Like whatever, bring them to a priest or confession or whatever's necessary. Um, and meditate but, on the mysteries yeah of the rosary. Yeah. Like even if you're like not a rosary yeah. person, like just just go sit down with a couple of the mysteries, right? And that can help you get into you know why these why these things are why these things are here and why why it's important. Thanks so much for listening. If you are not already following us on Instagram, be sure to check us out at charting toward intimacy. And if you listen to podcasts on a platform that gives you the option to rate or review, we'd love for you to do that because it helps us spread the word about the podcast. If you ever have questions, comments, or episode topic ideas, please reach out to us. We love to hear from you. You can reach out on Instagram or send us an email. Our email is in the show notes until next time. 